So hi, everybody. We're here for Patches and Pieces, Monday on a Tuesday, because I wasn't here yesterday. And today we're going to make our little butterfly, our little 3D applique butterfly. Um, as I said, to get the applique sheet and the supply list and instructions, go to my uh, website, heartfeltcreativewithdiana.com, and that with is W-I-T-H, so heartfeltcreativewithdiana.com, and you can download, this is a free download, okay? And um, it gives you this little bit of information about what you need supply-wise, so let me just go through that. Um, you need one copy of the application sheet, um, heat and bond, heat and bond light, Either way is fine. And you'll need a, a piece that is about five inches this way and about 12 inches this way. Okay. And uh, Decaville light interfacing. I don't know how many of you have ever used Decaville or Decaville light. It's a pretty stiff, it's fusible on one side and you'll be able to tell because I don't know if you can in this screen or not, but it has a little, there you can see it a little bit, it has a little bit of a shine to it. That's the fusible side, okay? And it's a little bit stiff and you'll need that. I, I cut, because I buy this by the bolt, I just cut one big strip off, but you're gonna need a strip that is about five by seven inches at the most, okay? Um, or if you don't have Decaville or Decaville Light or something like that, because you might, there's other products that are similar with other names, so that's fine. Um, there's also another project, product that I use, it's called Terial Magic. Um, it's called a liquid fabric stabilizer. That's exactly what it is. I've heard people describe it as it makes your fabric like paper when it's done. I don't really think so. I just think it makes it stiff, but it also helps your stuff not to fray or not to fray badly. So if you like doing raw edge applique, but you don't like it to be real fray on the edges. Uh, this stuff is really nice. So this piece of fabric has been treated with it. And you can see it's still, still a little wibbly, but it's stiffer than, than this is. See how that just hangs like that? And that one doesn't buckle. It's because this has Terial Magic on it. Super easy to use. You lay your piece of fabric on your ironing board or your ironing space and you spray this on it and you get it pretty wet, okay? I mean, it, it should look like a piece of wet fabric. And I think the bottle says, wait 10 minutes before you press it. I'd wait more like 15 because if you, your iron can tend to stick on it and it'll, it peels right off and you, but a lot of times I've ended up because I've been too fast trying to get it done. I've had to clean the bottom of my iron off and, just my tip for cleaning your iron, let your iron cool down, get a Mr. Clean Magic Eraser wet on like on half of it. Once your iron is cool and just rub it and all the grit and grime and junk comes right off of it. And that I've used those for a long time now, years. Um, so if you let it wait for about 15 minutes, if you use this Terial Magic, um, and I know, you can, I know you can order this off of Amazon because that's where I get mine. Um, you might also have a fabric shop that has it as well. Um, but I think, like I said, it says 10 minutes, I'd wait 15. Let it start to look a little drier, or it may be that you really over wet it, but you need to get it wet. So I don't think that's really a problem, but it comes out pretty stiff. And the nice thing with using that with this project, that's what I did with the larger part of our butterfly here is I use Terial Magic on this piece. I'm gonna use the Decaville on the one that I'm gonna demonstrate. That way you'll see how they turn out. Is um, it, see it, I mean, it'll flap like a wing, I guess, if you wanna say that, but it's not flopping around. And as you can see, it's not, it's not coming undone. It's not fraying. Now the little guy in the middle, the little butterfly, we don't use Terial Magic or Decaville on it, just Heat and Bond. So that's that product, those two products. Um, multiple scraps of fabric. You'll need one, the biggest one you need is about five by seven for your large butterfly. 
Um, then you'll need a small piece. I gave you on the sheet two of my little butterflies just so it kind of fill the page up or I, I don't know it, there's no other reason <laughs> really not there's not um I could try to make something up but today with with this whole headache thing going on it wouldn't come out right so um you just get two small butterflies and one big butterfly on the page um but for your small butterflies you um you don't need to treat the fabric or anything and you need a you need a piece that is about three by four, five, three by five or six for one small butterfly. Okay, that's all you need. And so both of those easily fit on a five by 12 piece of heat and bond. I'm actually using heat and bond light. Um, that a pencil for tracing, um, thread, I'll talk about thread in a minute. All we do sewing wise on our butterfly is some decorative stitches here and some decorative stitches here. And if you decide to add ribbon, to stitch the ribbon on in the back, that's all you need thread for. So we'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, pencil scissors, I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you what I prefer when I do applique. These are all by a different company, but they're all the same scissor in different sizes. Whoever manufactures this scissor allows companies to buy it and put their name on it, but it's the same scissor. So this one, and I think this might be the best one. Let me put in my magnifiers for a second. Yeah, you can tell really, 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 really close up that those scissors have a serrated edge. I love these. These are one of, see how these are kind of squishy, but the inside isn't squishy. So it's comfortable in the hand. Um, these blue ones are slightly smaller. I use these for a lot of fine tuning stuff. These are really my go-to scissors, unless I'm cutting big sheets of fabric and stuff like that. If I'm cutting out a pattern, anything like that, and believe it or not, I cut my heat and bond with these two because it's made to do that. And they have that serrated edge as well. They're made to cut that. So you don't have to worry, oh, fabric scissors getting cut on paper. It, it, it's fine. I've had these scissors for, oh, five years. They are as sharp today as they were when I bought them. And I cut my heat and bond with it all the time. And then there's these little, 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 little ones, these little tea tiny ones, as my friend Gina would say. And they have the serrated edges too. And uh, the serrated edges make your cut really clean. It's almost like having a microscopic painting here, except they work better. <laughs> um, but these are so tiny. I use these for cutting thread and not much more. Um, you could probably cut fabric, but it's kind of hard. It doesn't want to cut. These are really lightweight little snips. Um, I use them when I machine embroider to cut thread a lot, but I don't like cut out around my thing with them. I, thread is about it, but they're super comfortable in your hand because again, they got the little squishy, squishy hand grips. So I like these, but you need something that is about this level as far as size of blade and all. This is probably a little too small. And actually I use this one. So, you know, you could use something a little bigger too if you want, but something small, something made for applique or machine embroidery, something like that would, would work good for this project, okay? Your sewing machine in good uh, working order. And as an optional thing, either I put on here like a pipe cleaner or, um, floral wire. You know how you can like at the craft store in the floral section and get little bundles of long straight floral wires and the, and the floral tape. That's an optional idea that I'm going to tell you about. Okay, so that's what's on this sheet. And then this sheet is the real Megillah, as they say. Okay, that's what we really need. My little, my little butterflies. They didn't turn out too bad if I could say so. 
I'm not, I'm not a, I'm not a drawer. I don't do well. And so there was a lot of erasing. So I think like when you stand here, you'll see little speckles in here. I think that was like eraser dust that was still on here when I made it into an image to put on paper. <laughs> oh, well, that, that's life, right? You can, you can still see it perfectly well. So let me get my extra, my extra heat and bond out of the way. Sorry. And I've got my Decaville. Okay, so we're going to start out making our largest butterfly. Now, there's one other thing that if you have it, I've had mine for about 16 years because I had a sister-in-law who talked me into doing scrapbooking once and I went whole hog in it and I liked it, but in the end, In the end, it wasn't my thing as much. I love them. Um, I love doing them in frames for like a collage picture kind of thing, but just to put all my pictures that way and put all of that effort into putting the pictures and with digital cameras, I just got out of using it. But the one thing that I bought that I have used all the time is my light box. It was inexpensive. I, as light boxes go, I mean, there are, some of them are hundreds and thousands of dollars. I think I spent 30 bucks on this. It's called a light tracer by Astrograph. I don't even know if they're still in business, but if you're interested, yeah, Astrograph in Plymouth, Minnesota, model 225365. Well, there you go. There's a sticker on the back. Um, it even has holes in it so you can put it on a wall if you want, but there's a thing here, you just fold it, and your light comes on. A light box can be really helpful when tracing applique, or so can a window on a sunny day, but you don't always have a sunny day. Um, if you have a window with enough light coming through, use a little bit of like painter's tape or something to tape your piece on the window, your applique piece, then tape your fabric over it, and then you can draw. But um, this little light box was worth all her gift because I used it way beyond my scrapbooking. I used it for applique and stuff, which I do all the time. So it was a good purchase for me. So before we start that part, I just want to show you, we're going to take, you need two pieces for your, you need two pieces for each butterfly, okay? roughly the same size. So one piece, nothing yet. And then the other piece, we're going to add our Decaville light to it. Remember I told you one side of the Decaville light has um, a fusible on it. So let me flip the camera. So take your Decaville, you're going to be on your pressing mat or your ironing board. You're going to lay your fabric on there and then you're going to fuse it onto it and trim it up, okay? I'm not gonna redo this one because this is my other piece of fabric, but I will show you the one I've already done. So here was my piece of fabric. I laid my Decaville on it. Let's pretend this is my iron. And I pressed and I fused it all together. And now it's all of these. This is going to end up being the back of the butterfly. And you're gonna say, wow, that Decaville's thick. Will you be able to see through it to trace it? Da, 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 da. You don't need to worry about that. Okay, no tracing with this one. So that's the easy, that's easy. Piece. Actually, there's nothing about this that's hard, but that's all you do with the back piece of fabric for your butterfly. Now you want to bring in your heat and bond strip, okay? Now I do want to bring over my iron and my mini pressing mat. Okay, so here's my fabric, my other fabric. Now. I have not material magic this one like I did on our sample because I want because we're going to be using the Decaville. So I've got my fabric and I've given it, you know, I've given it a nice press, no wrinkles. I'm going to lay this is how I do my heat and bond. If you have a way you do it and like it better, knock yourself out. But I just line mine up, and even though it's sticking out here and here, I just 
start bonding it from the front just for a little bit, just to get it on a little bit. Then I flip it over and now I just really heat it up. And I don't worry, if I come off this edge a little bit and get a little onto my mat, it, the, the glue peels right off the mat. That's why I don't get all bent out of shape about having that there because I've never had a problem getting like literal specks and stuff off. And I always know when it's good and bonded because my iron doesn't want to move across the paper anymore. See down here, it's moving real easy. So I'm gonna let it sit for a minute. And now see, it doesn't want to move. It's bonded. I don't know why it does that, but it's bonded. All right, so see, look, I got some glue there. No problem. Do, 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 do. And it's fine. It just all picks up and it's fine. Not a problemo. So don't get yourself freaked out if you get a little glue on your mat. Alrighty, so now we're gonna we are gonna go ahead and trim this up because this is still a perfectly good piece of heat and bond over here that I can use um, if I needed to. I could use it for my my little guy. Cut so my heat and bond over there and trim up this side. Okay. So now I have one of my large pieces with heat and bond on it. Now I want to bring in my light box or I, I want to bring in my applique sheet. If you don't have a light box, it's no big deal. You could probably, if your fabric was light enough, oof, I don't know, you might need a light box or a window. So I turn mine over so that the fabric facing down and I make sure that I can see all the lines in here. Then I use a pencil and I start tracing my butterfly. Now, as you can see, I'm not being super, super duper critical about my lines here. I'm getting them, I'm making sure they're pretty nice, but so I can see this one, bring it up and connect it here. I can see these pretty easy with the light. So a lighter fabric might be a little easier to trace. There's another way you could do this. I'll tell you about that in a minute. You could tape this to the heat and bond and then just cut around it. But I'm not crazy specific. Like, see, that's that's kind of right, but not exactly. But it doesn't matter. It's still a butterfly. I still know it's a butterfly. So now I'm going to set that aside. And I'm going to take my scissors and I'm going to cut it out. Cutting. And I just kind of follow the line around. I try to be, you know, as accurate as I can. I don't go crazy, but if it happens not to be exact, exact, I don't get bent out of shape over it. As long as it's still a butterfly, it's all that matters. Truly, that's all that matters. I put out a saying yesterday over on my Facebook page, so in common. Um, and many of you, if you've quilted, will know this phrase, better finished um, than perfect. And that's my idea for this as well. I'd rather it be finished and have a good time than get bent out of shape and try to make these cuts perfect. After a while, I just cut off the big chunks that get in my way.
you have questions, just put them in the comments and I will certainly get back to you. Okay. Now I hear some of you out there saying, how are you going to get this attached to that piece of fabric with the Decaville on it? Because that Decaville, you use the fusible side. Yep. But remember, heat and bond is two-sided. All right, so there we go. We have a butterfly. We'll take that and put it in the garbage. There, we have a butterfly. Oh, I love it in that fabric. Yeah, I do. Okay, so now we want our piece that has our Decaville on it. Let me bring back the pressing sheet and the iron. So I want to lay this down with the Decaville facing up, okay, and the fabric facing the mat. I want to go over here and I want to peel off the backing paper of my heat and bond. Now, if you can't get it to come off, um, use a pin and it'll prick it and then it'll get to come off. So there you can see the wax paper side of the paper of the Decaville and you can see the back of my butterfly is really nice and has that glossy look. That's the blue. Pop it down on there any old way you want. You want to try and get it like to use the least amount of your stuff. Try to like really fit it in like this if you want or just plop it down in the middle. It's up to you. Then take the old iron and press. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Ain't nothing to this. I'm just gonna get it nice and attached. So after I've pressed and sealed it, I bring it up and I just kind of wiggle it a little bit to see if there are any little pieces that aren't sticking yet where I need to re. And that's on there really good. Now that's hot as blue blazes. So we're gonna let that cool just a minute. Cool down. Okay, nice. So now I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna cut. So I could do a whole nother large butterfly with that. So I'm gonna set that aside. So now I'm gonna take and cut out my butterflies this way. And again, I'm not going to try and be absolutely perfect on these lines. If I catch a little bit of my upper butterfly, it's no big deal because now I'm cutting them together. So they're going to be exactly the same regardless of how I make my cuts, right? So get rid of that chunk. I don't like chunky parts around small bits because they get in my way. You know, it's funny, Dave and I, my husband, were talking yesterday in the car um, about when we were kids and the television shows that were on when we were kids. And I grew up just outside of Chicago in Joliet, Illinois. And there was a show called Ray Rayner and Friends. Ray Rayner, I mean, this was when television was pretty young, right? in the early, early 60s, late 50s. And Ray Rayner was hilarious. And every Wednesday, and he'd come on and he'd do like, he had this big overstuffed dog called Cuddly Dudley, um, where he'd go and read mail that came into the show from kids. And Cuddly Dudley was this big, huge dog with a person in it, right? And it's, it's just probably the cameraman because it was a, you know, a really low budget kids show. Um, and on Wednesdays, Ray Rayner always had craft day. And the big joke was do not hand him a bottle of white Elmer's school glue 
because he was forever trying to stick something together that was felt and something else with school glue. And he'd get the glue everywhere, be on his hands. And one day he got it on his face and stuck his hand to his face. I mean, it was hilarious. And by the time I got older and the show was still on and my kid brother was watching the show, um, I would be walking out the door of school going, don't hand him the glue, man, you're gonna regret it. And um, we were laughing about that, that it was kind of interesting to grow up when television was generally a new kind of exciting thing. All right, so here's my butterfly, front to back. Ooh, now see, that's the back of my butterfly. So isn't that gonna be pretty when I bend it and all? You're gonna see that on the back, all of that pretty flower work. And this is right here. So let's look here. So see how this side is rounded and this side is a little pointed. Yeah, I kind of want them. Like I said, I'm not too upset about it. I just, I'm just gonna round that off just a little bit there. I do kind of like that better. And that's the kind of thing, it is completely up to you. And you can see over here that maybe this didn't get cut into quite as much. So let's, there we go. That's a little closer. Yeah, I like that a little better. And so I just kind of fixed it up how I liked it. Now my outer large butterfly is done. Now we're gonna turn around and do the same thing with our little yellow one. Now I'm gonna tell you this, I've used the same fabric on the front and the back of this. And on this one, I used the same fabric on the front and the back of the little one. However, butterflies can be all different colors, right? So I've already put my heat and bond and traced my little guy. So I'm gonna cut him out now. Um, so, Butterflies can be all kinds of colors. So you could do something like put different colored fabric on the front and the back of each butterfly and really make it like spectacular colors. In fact, because I did not grab a piece, another piece of yellow polka dot fabric, I'm gonna have to find something here that's on the table and cut it for my back piece for this guy. So the back of this little guy is going to be different than the front of them, and that's okay. You can do that intentionally. And I can say, oh, hey, I meant to do that, even though I didn't. And where Dave grew up, my husband was in Bloomington, Illinois, which is like in the middle of the state. And they used to have a show called Captain Jinx and Salty Sam. It's the same kind of late 50s, early 60s, low budget kids show when television was generally new, didn't have all the, you know, cool computer graphics and stuff we do now. Um, but it was the same kind of thing as R. Ray Rayner up here in the Chicago area. And um, we were watching that and he said, uh, Salty Sam was, actu was actually the cameraman. <laughs> <laughs> and when he figured it out, he was a little disappointed for a moment. <laughs> All right, so now I've got my, my baby butterfly done, but I need to, oh, I don't want to cut any of that. Oh, hey, here we go. I've got a piece of this cut already. So I can cut a little more. So we're gonna make the back of my butterfly, my little butterfly this red with the pink little ditzy flowers on it. I love this, it's so pretty. It's gonna look nice because this has red in it too. I'm not even cutting like a whole piece. So that's my salvage. I know I don't wanna be in there. So I'm gonna set it like right about there. Oops, would help if I took the backing paper off, huh? I'm such a goof. Oops. Yeah. There we go. The, the heat and bond really does come off pretty easily. And press. And like I said, on this one, no Decavel, no Tyrio Magic if you use that product, because you want your little butterfly to be a little more giving in how it moves. Yeah. 
let that cool for a moment. Now for this, I'm gonna take my rotary cutter. Try to make a fairly straight cut there so I'm not really yanking that beautiful piece of fabric around. All right, so now I'm gonna cut this one out. And then we will do the only sewing that is involved. And again, I'm not worried if I don't stay exactly in or on the lines. I'm just cutting, cutting. But anyway, when I do this, I feel like Ray Rayner on craft day on channel nine WGN from Chicago, Illinois. That was such a great show. Whenever your high school or your grade school or something did something special up in our area, you got to appear as a class or as a group on Ray Reiner. In a year, we won um, the volleyball districts for my high school when I was a um, junior. Um, we got to appear in this one. And they always gave you bags of candy and cookies on your way out the door. All right. So since I didn't use the same color, of course, you can see little bits of red around this. It still doesn't bother me. Sometimes butterflies have little bits of other color on the edges. So that doesn't bother me either. Or I could flip them around and I can use, in fact, I may do that. I'm going to flip them around and use the red on the inside. I'm going to flip them that way. Seriously, you can do anything you want. Now, the only other thing, let me switch back to the main camera. That's the sewing camera. We're going to go there. Hi. So the only thing we need to do now is sew this together. If you want to make it like our sample where I have ribbon on it. Now, this ribbon can be used to... Tie these onto a battery operated candle. Not quite straight, but you get the idea. Or um, do you need a project for kids to make for Mother's Day? Put a little pin back there and they can make little pins for mommy. Kind of be cute. Or I told you earlier, floral wire or pipe cleaners, hot glue one to the back and stick these in a bouquet of fresh flowers. They'd really be pretty. Now, um, you don't have to put the ribbon on if you're going to use the wires and all. However, you could still add the ribbon because I think the ribbon still looks pretty. If I had a pipe cleaner on this or a piece of floral wire and it was stuck in my flowers and ribbons were hanging around it too, I think that would be lovely. So you can kind of do what you want in that respect. If you do ribbon, I always cut a pretty good size piece, like 16 to 18 inches. Um, is that what I've got here? Probably. Yeah, pretty much just about 18 inches. Even though I may not use that much of it, I cut it that way anyway, and I can trim it at the end. I never like to get caught short on my ribbon. So let me flip the camera over to the sewing machine. I'm gonna get rid of my light box here. We're almost done. And I will have gotten this done almost in an hour again. I'm so glad. All righty. So here we are at the sewing machine. Now, I've chosen this kind of, let's see, can you see this? This kind of an olive green thread. I use the same thread in my bobbin as I do in my top thread for this project because it's going to be seen on the back and it kind of is supposed to be like that center piece that comes out of your butterfly, right? Where their legs and their little body, it's really their little body is in there. Now you could use black or you could use brown. I chose that olive green because there's a lot of green in here. And when I made um, this little guy, see there's a lot of green in there too. And you really can't tell too much 
where that thread is there in the middle. So, but you can do whatever you like. Is it your butterfly? I've been singing that, that Elton John song that says butterflies are free to fly, fly away. I've been singing that all day since I knew we were gonna do this. All right, now if you see on my little butterfly, see how there's a little bit of difference in here? It doesn't really bother me to be quite honest, but I am going to I'm going to do that. And I just did too much. Oh, well. So when I put him on here, instead of like centering him, I try to get him so the little antennas are up by the big antennas, not all the way at the top. You can't get them all the way up there, but so that it's kind of right about like that. Then the fun part. Now, I know some of you have probably done this where you've done free motion and things like that. And that's totally cool. If free motion is your thing, you go for it because it's very cool. Um, but we have so many decorative threads on our sewing machine. This is a little sewing machine that I've set up right here, just a little brother. Um, and it's got like over 200 specialty stitches on it. So what I did is I decided to use them on our butterfly. So I'm going to choose, I think I chose yeah, 74. And I brought my width down to a five. I left my stitch length the, the same and I brought my width down to a five. And here we go, glasses. Alrighty, so I've kind of got them set up. So I'm gonna start about here and I'm gonna go, you're gonna think, oh, she's just gonna go down to here. Nope, I'm gonna go all the way off my main butterfly because the body of the butterfly usually comes down. Now the body of my butterfly is gonna look like some little leaves on a vine because that's the stitch I chose. Not stitching really quickly because I noticed with decorative stitches, um, a nice slow to medium stitch gives you a better shape in your decorative stitch. If you go really fast, your needle moves faster than your fabric does and you get a wonky look to it. I'll show you what I mean by that. So I've got that done. I'm gonna snip, snip that tail thread there now. I'm gonna come up here and snip my threads. Now my starting thread kind of got woven in there. So I'm just gonna be a little bit careful right there. And I'm gonna snip those off and snip that one off there. Okay, so I'll show you what I mean by not going fast. So do you see how on this side, that little stitch is nice and lovely form, right? I went nice and slow, medium. On this one, I started out really fast and look at how wonky and dense. That's because the needle was moving up and down faster than the fabric was moving through the machine. And so it stitched on top of itself and made it wonky. I don't, I mean, it doesn't bother me. It's not a huge deal. It would be if I were doing a piece of clothing or apparel, something like that. But for this, it doesn't bother me too much. But I just wanted to show you that to explain why you kind of want a nice slow to medium um, stitch when you're doing this. Now we are stitched together. Our two pieces are together. So now you can keep the same stitch to do some veining in your small butterfly wings, or you can choose a different stitch. I think this time I'm going to leave my stitch alone. So what I do is I come up and I, I press this guy back, the big one back, just so all I have that I'm seeing is the small wing on one side. And I'm gonna start up here. Nice medium speed. And I'm just gonna come down and go right off the wing. There we go. And 
that gives some veining in that wing. And I think the decorative threads just add more than, again, you could just use straight stitches, but I, I kind of like that. And if you want to put more in, say you want another little piece of decorative stitching right there, keep it back and go in and do it there. That's fine. But now I'm going to do the other thing with this other side. I'm going to flip my big wing back. It's just so my small wing is showing. And I'm going to start here. Oh, let's see now, i got to slow it down again. My lead foot got to go and we'll see how that turns out. I don't know. And I'm just kind of following the general shape. I'm not trying to make it exactly the way I did on the other side because butterflies are not symmetrical in that way in their markings. They can be slightly different on each side. That's okay. Now, I've got some veining here, some veining here in the center, and he's all hooked together. He's, see, not going anywhere. He can fly all he wants. Now, if I want to do my ribbon, I take and, and find the halfway point of my ribbon. So right about there, give it a little squeeze so I know where it's at. And I don't come right to the middle because in the middle, of the big butterfly, you're at the bottom of the small butterfly. So I actually just go a little bit below the uh, antenna on the back side of the large butterfly. And I go back to a straight stitch. I start a couple stitches off the ribbon, go through the ribbon, a couple stitches off the ribbon and then go back across the exact same amount. And now my butterfly is all stitched together. That's all the stitching you have to do. Can you imagine how many of these you could make in an hour if you wanted to do? The other thing I thought is if you did just the tiny ones, I'm gonna come around and flip the camera. If you did just the tiny butterflies, you could put those on little pieces of, you could do the small ones on little pieces of wire and like decorate a cake or something with them. I think it would be beautiful. I love butterflies in the spring, they're so lovely. And we get them here like even into the summer. So now he's kind of flat, right? So we need to shape him a little bit. And that's the other thing that the Decaville and the or the Cheerio Magic, whichever you use, um, can help you with is to help give him shape and form. So I'm gonna just kind of pull my ribbon out of the way I'm not gonna worry about my little guy so much. I'm just gonna fold in right kind of there where a joint would be. I'm just gonna fold him in, the big one, and press. And I'm gonna hold it for a minute so it, it gets a good press there. Almost like I'm giving it a good crease because trust me, you, you can't over crease it. So that's done. Then I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna pull my ribbon to the other side, lay that down and press. Let me get this out to work so I can show you. Okay. So now while your piece is still warm, because if you really give it a super good press, it's going to stay warm for a couple of seconds. Hold it together, right, right where you pressed it. Just hold that fold together. And as it cools, it's gonna kind of keep that shape. And the Tyrael Magic and the Decaville will help it keep that shape. There we go. All right. And so it even really shaped my inner guy, my little guy, but I don't want him quite so much. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna undo him a little. But there we go. Very free form little butterflies. So for the pattern, and actually what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take and fold my little guy in straight and I'm gonna press him, and press those big creases out of him on that little one so that it, it looks there. That's a little bit better. Yeah, that's better. I like that a lot better. 
And so um, the pattern for this with the sheet that gives you all the instructions, um, supplies and information, and this um, is at my website, uh, heartfeltcreativewithdiana.com, and that with is W-I-T-H, not W slash Diana, but W-I-T-H, Diana.com. It's a free download. Help yourself. Share it with your friends. I don't mind. And um, you can make yourself. So now I have two very distinct little butterflies. Now, do you do, do your little girls do May crowns on May 1st or they do little crowns and you put little, so you could do, get like an inexpensive at a dollar store headband for a little girl. And if you wanted to use just the little ones, you could use one big one maybe and a bunch of little ones and line the little headband with it and put some of the ribbons on it. It looks so pretty, I think. And I know some of you out there have little girls that would like that. So we have this one and that one. So help yourself to the pattern and enjoy it. Um, I am going to 